So I am still in Greece, uh, timing-wise. It just didn't work for me to wait till I was back. So apologies for background noise. That doesn't seem so much today. I just wanted to take the opportunity, though, to have a quick word about what's going on in terms of the RMT strike and in terms of other strikes. So, you know, like... Every time I see it in the media, the, the talk about the strike is like, this lady couldn't get to work, and this person had an important appointment, and this person is going to lose money if they can't get there. And I think that we're super, super missing the point. Let's be clear about what the rail workers have been offered. They've been offered 8% over two years. Now, I don't want to sound like a maths genius, but roughly speaking, that's 4% a year. So they're offered a 4% pay rise, while inflation is projected to be 11% this year. So if your pay goes up by 7% less than inflation, that means the amount of money you have to spend goes up by 7% less than inflation. It's worth less. You can buy less. And actually, that's really bad news for comedians because less people will be able to afford to come to my shows. It's really bad news for anybody who's selling something because people won't be able to afford it. It's bad news for absolutely everybody except debt collectors and, you know, followers of Beelzebub who wish to see people suffer as much as possible. It's horrific. And actually, it's really bad news, for example, for the health service because people with less money can't afford to look after themselves in terms of their health. People don't have the freedom to make good choices. They end up getting cold because their houses aren't heated. They end up getting ill because they're not eating well, because they're not exercising, because they're having to work really long hours, and they end up with stress. And that leads to lots of medical conditions. We know it's, it's linked to heart attacks, strokes, cancers, all kinds of things like that. So ultimately, asking for a fair pay rise that is in line with inflation is of benefit to all of us. And it's also of benefit to all of us because the more of us that ask for it and demand it, the more reasonable it is for everybody else to be asking for it and demanding it as well. So, like, I would really urge you, whenever you see these messages, to bear in mind that these people are out on strike for the benefit of all of us. And if you have the opportunity to go and visit a picket line and show your support, then absolutely do. But what I've been doing is when I get these emails from the rail companies saying, oh, because of the strike, your train service will be reduced, blah, 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 is I reply or I go on the train company website where the comments section is and I say, I think you've missed the point. My train is not delayed because of terrible people striking. It's delayed because the government, in conjunction with the rail companies, is refusing to do the fair and reasonable thing and pay people what they're worth and, pay, and look after the, the values in terms of safety and all the other things that they're striking about. And we're going to see more and more industries doing this because it's absolutely across the board. And it is also why... We have a shortage of doctors and a shortage of nurses because those people were not given fair pay rises and are, you know, inevitably looking for other jobs, moving abroad. And we're desperately short of doctors and nurses and it's bringing the NHS to its knees at a time when we need it more than ever. So we're looking forward to a summer of strikes and if you're out on strike, absolute solidarity to you. And I urge all of us to bear in mind that when people go out on strike for fair wages, they're out on strike for the benefit of all of us. And they don't deserve anger about, oh, I couldn't get to my appointment. I know, that's the point. Strikes are supposed to be disruptive. That's why they work. The people who are causing the strikes are not the people on the picket lines. The people causing the strikes are the people in our government and higher up in the corporate structure who are refusing to do what's fair and what's right. 60% of the inflation that we've experienced is down to increased corporate profits. Don't be fooled with the war in Russia. Don't be fooled with the Brexit story. Those things are contributors to what's going on. But the biggest driver of the inflation we're experiencing right now is corporate profits. And we can resolve that problem by paying people a better wage. And if that eats into some corporate profits, I, for one, am okay with that. See you next week. <laughs>